Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Let others join and then we'll start playing. Okay, sure, sir. Sir, can you hear me properly today? Yes, fine. Okay, sir. Okay, can we start now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so what have we done last class? So oxidation reduction. Uh, so what was the last reaction we did? Tolens reagent. Tolens. Yes, sir. Tolens we finished, no? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. That you wrote, you told us to write uh, Felling's test heading. Mm -hmm. So, okay, one question you see, um, and then we'll start with Felling solution. Um, just a second. Suppose we have this molecule. And there is OH here and OET here. This reacts with two molecules of CS3 MgCl. H plus H2. Tell me the product.
Done? One second, sir. So I think I'm done. What is the answer? How many products you got? I got two. Okay. What is the name of the product? I said triangle plus CH3 and M triangle means cyclopropane. Yes, sir. And? MGOHCL. No. Oh. What is the other one? Like any answer? Simple, no. See, first of all, uh, we have OH present, right? This is active hydrogen. Okay, so with CS3MgCl, it gives acid base reaction and it forms what? Plus, we get the conjugate base of this acid, which is O minus and OET. Correct. This is the one problem, but we are using two moles of it. So if this lone pair comes over here, this goes out as a living group and it forms what? Double bond O plus OET minus. This is ketone and on this the reaction of CS3MgCl takes place with H plus H2O and it converts into OH CS3. Correct. Tell me any doubt in this? Uh, one second, sir. Uh, clear, sir. No doubt? No. Okay. So the next one, the next test we have, that is filling solution test. Felling solution test, we use two solution for this test. And both we call it as the mixture of both is means the combination of both is the felling solution test. Fellings A and fellings B. 
yeah, failings A, failings B, you can say, or failing one, failing two, you can say anyone, right? So it is failing one that we take as aqueous CuSO4 solution. This is failing one. And the failing two is failing two is sodium potassium tartrate. sodium potassium tartrate okay and the both the combination of both we use in two steps of these two both we call it as the failing solution okay this is failing solution okay this is okay what is sodium potassium tartrate Sodium potassium tartrate is this. We have OH, OH, H, H, C, O, O, N, A, and C, O, O. This is sodium potassium tartrate. When you look at this molecule, sodium potassium tartrate, could we say that this is the salt of weak acid and strong base is it yes sir why weak acid uh, you have two cooh groups in an COO, organic compound cooh cooh here and when it reacts with naoh and koh it gives you these two compounds correct salt of weak acid and strong base in ionic equilibrium, we'll discuss this. We have discussed this already, right? And its aqueous solution is what? On a hydrolysis, if you do on hydrolysis, on hydrolysis, the solution will be acidic or basic? Basic. The solution is basic. Why basic? Strong base, so that because be we are strong. Whatever is strong is there, that would be the nature of the solution. If you take a strong acid, the solution will be on hydrolysis, the solution will be acidic. Strong base, the solution will be basic. Correct? So, in the second step, we have basic solution. That is what the conclusion of all these discussions. Yeah. So now, what happens here that you see? Basic solution we have, and we have Cu2 plus present over here. Right? So with Cu2 plus in the basic medium, Cu2 plus in basic medium, we have OH minus, 2 OH minus, and it forms what? It forms CuOH whole twice, which on heating converts into CuO plus 2H2. Now this CuO is the oxidizing agent we have. Aldehyde, when allowed to react with this, it reacts with the oxidizing agent CuO and this converts into Cu2O. It gets reduced and this oxidizes aldehyde into an acid that is C double bond OOH. The conformation of this uh, reaction we get by the color of this, which is brick red color or red color simply. Right, the Cu2 that forms, that is also a very, uh, you know, it is a oxidizing agent. It can behave as an oxidizing agent. 
So if any aldehyde is left in this reaction, that also reacts with Cu2O and converts into COOH acid. So this is the test of aldehyde, okay, failing solution test. Done. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So in the next step, one more reaction you write down here. If any aldehyde is left, R C double bond O H reacts with C U two O. It gives copper and acid. So the red or brick red color that you get, that confirms the presence of aldehyde. This is the test of aldehyde. Right, so all aldehyde gives this particular test. Ketone does not give. Write down one note over here. All aldehyde gives this test. All aldehyde gives this test and with an exception of benzyl dehyde. With an exception of benzyl dehyde. So benzyl dehyde does not show felling solution test but it shows Tollens reagent test. Okay, important this one. Why sir? I said it is an exception. Okay, sir. So if there is any reason, then it is not an exception. Okay, okay, okay sir. Okay, so it is an exception. Oh, one second, sir, one second. All aldehydes gives this test except benzyl dehyde. Yes, I done. Okay. So this is important that benzyl dehyde shows Tollens test, but not Benedict solution test. Okay. Ketone does not give this test, right now. Okay, ketone does not give this test. What about this one? So this also gives a Lynx test. Why? Because of active hydrogen. Active hydrogen is the reason. Hemiacetyl gives this test. O R O H H N R hemiacetyl. Ketone does not give this test. What about this one? This compound? No, it won't give.
Why? Sir, neither sir. It will neither form a hemiacetal structure or is it an aldehyde? This also gives this test. Hmm? Okay. One hydroxy, two ketone. If it is present, it gives this test because it goes under tautomerism and forms aldehyde in basic medium. And that is the reason of uh, fructose also which gives this test. Remember in biomolecules, Yes, a D. I was, I was yelling at this point, no? That fructose gives pairing solution test, Benedict, uh, this one, Tollins reagent test. Why? Because we have one hydroxy, two keto. It goes under tautomerism and it, one of the form, it has aldehyde as a functional group present. That's why the mixture shows this particular test. Even the same thing happens over here. See, the medium is basic. The medium of this reaction is basic, OH minus. So this OH minus takes this active hydrogen, H plus. Right. So you said active hydrogen, that, but not exactly correct. Only active hydrogen won't give this test. You have this, correct. Now, when this yes, comes back here to form a pi bond, then this goes out as a leaving group. And eventually we get what? We get an aldehyde. And that's why this shows this. Okay, sir. Understood. So, if they give you a simple molecule aldehyde, you can say it, it shows tolerance or failing, correct? But the problem is they won't give you the symbol one. Right. So yes, these sir. things you must take care of. Whenever you have one hydroxy to ketone, it shows tolerance as well as failing solution test. This time. Okay. If yes, you have sir. this hemiacetal structure, this also shows failing and tolerance reagent test. Chalega? Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Third one you write down. It is Benedict solution. All these are weak oxidizing agents. Benedict solution test. What is Benedict solution test? It is again the similar kind of test, exactly similar. We take aqueous CuSO4 with sodium citrate. Okay. Sodium citrate for this test. Sodium citrate is what? It is this one. Only the molecule is different here. But they serve the same uh, purpose here. You know, the previous one, sodium potassium tartrate, what kind of salt was that? Mixed salt. What is mixed salt? Basic salt. Basic salt, Basic salt right? Solution of salt of uh, weak acid and strong base. And this is also the same thing you see. Weak acid and strong base, yes or no? Yeah, right. yes, sir. Also goes on hydrolysis and makes the solution basic. Makes the solution basic. The OH minus that you get here from this solution, we get OH minus. 
and then we have the same thing reaction of oh minus with cu2 plus like we did in the last one do you want me to write down or it's fine uh, yes sir please i won't write okay sir OH you are. and from here to here it is same. Now you tell me, do I need to write down this? Uh, no, sir. There also the solution is basic. Same thing here, basic solution. But till here, the, the, no, the way by which the solution is getting basic, that way is different. We are using different compound over there. Right. But the purpose is same. That also gives OH minus. This also gives OH minus, which reacts with CU two plus and gives this product. Even you have, you don't have to write down this again. Just after okay. that, you write down. Then it is same as failing solution test. Finish. Nothing much. Okay, sir. One second, sir, please. Hmm. Just after this, you write down same as failing solution test. Finish. Yes, sir. Okay. So these three tests that we have done, the medium of these tests is what? Basic. So all these are basic medium tests for aldehyde and ketone. Correct. Now the next one is, you write down, the next one is acidic medium test. What all tests we have which takes place in acidic medium? These tests are not important. Okay, Tollens, Fellings, Benedict are very, very important. Okay, so those things are far more important than this acidic medium test. Okay, acidic medium test we'll see, but it is not that important. The first one is HgCl2 test. HgCl2 test. Okay, the reaction you see, we have an aldehyde, RC double bond O, H, reacts with HgCl2 with H2O, and this converts into RC double bond O, OH plus Hg2Cl2 plus 2HCl. This, the color of this is white. Further, if any aldehyde is left, that also reacts with reacts with Hg2Cl2 in presence of water and converts into The color of this is grayish black, gray, black. This is the change in color that gives this particular test. Like I said, this is not at all important. Okay. But just you need to keep this in mind.
only we have two tests into this one. HgCl2 and one more we have that we call it as Stiff's reagent test. The second one, A stiff reagent is rosa aniline. The reagent is rosa aniline hydrochloride. There's no reaction, just you need to know what change happens into this one. Okay. Rosa aniline hydrochloride. This, the color of this is pink or magenta. The color of this is pink or magenta. When it reacts with SO2, this converts into, this will get oxidized and we get oxidized form of it. Okay. Which is colorless actually? Which is colorless? Okay. Now, in this solution, if you place aldehyde here in this solution, if you place aldehyde, this converts into this converts into acid, the aldehyde gets oxidized, converts into acid. And we get the stiff reagent back onto this. Means what we say on reaction with this, stiff reagents restores its color and it again conforms and it again forms pink or magenta color over here. So this color rest like the way you know the reaction, the stiff reagents restores its color that confirms the presence of aldehyde. And we also say that aldehyde restores the color of stiff reagent. The color of stiff reagent. Ketone does not do so. Okay, and that is the test. Only the color change you have to keep in mind. So if I ask you glucose or fructose, which one gives this test? Glucose or fructose? Glucose. Glucose. Fructose won't give this test because the medium is acidic, right? And fructose mm -hmm. won't convert into So done? One second. Glucose gives this test. What exactly is Rosa and Sorry? What exactly is Rosa and Hydrochloride? Your voice is not coming, Venkat. What exactly is Rosa Aniline Hydrochloride? Ah, structure I'll show you. Okay, sir. Sure. Okay, sir. Sure. The structure I'll draw. I don't have space here. I'll draw it in the next page. But it's okay, structure you don't have to memorize. Okay. Just know the how the color changes takes place. What color changes are there? Rosa Aniline Hydrochloride is this structure.
just a second. Yeah, so this one is rosa aniline hydrochloride. Okay. Oh, okay, sir. One second. This, uh, you know, uh, structure. The name you should keep in mind that stiff reagent is rosa aniline hydrochloride. Yes, sir. Okay. So these two tests we have, which we perform in acidic medium. Okay. And it is not important at all. Okay. Since it is there in the syllabus, we have done it. Okay. Now the next reaction is, we have seen oxidation of aldehyde. Okay, the next we have to discuss is oxidation of ketone. Oxidation of ketone, I have already told you that it is done in dusty condition. It is not easy to oxidize ketone since it does not contain hydrogen on the carbon and carbon, right? And this reaction is also not much important. Okay, when I say not much important, in not much important, I'm not asking you to leave this. Okay, like if you revise, you should be more focused on, uh, you know, on aldehyde part, not ketone part. That is what I mean. Okay, now in this one, uh, we use a very strong oxidizing. Write down the oxidation of ketone is not easy. The oxidation of ketone is not easy and it is done and it is done in drastic condition drastic condition with the help of with the help of acidified KMnO4 with the help of acidified KMnO4 and acidified K2Cr2O7. So with help of? Acidified KMnO4 and acidified K2Cr2O7. Oh, this time it's acidic KMnO4. Yes. Always we used to use K, uh, alkaline. Now this is different. Okay. Hmm. So this is we have a very strong. The, both the reagents are very very strong oxidizing. Okay. okay, sir. And that's what we have studied. That for ketone we required a strong oxidizing agent, mild bond oxidizing. Right. Biomolecules also we have discussed. We use bromine water for to differentiate aldehyde and ketone. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. Not the strong one. 
Fine. So, how do we write down the oxidized product of ketone? Okay. Oxidized product of ketone. Here we do not have uh, the mechanism. Like I said, the mechanism of oxidation and uh, you know reduction reaction. Uh, for, there are few reactions uh, whose, whose oxidation the mechanism is given in the books. Like if you see Peter Sykes and uh, this thing, Essen um, Sanyal. But eventually, if you understand the mechanism, then also you have to memorize how to write down the product. Okay, so the mechanism part here won't affect much whether you get it or not. Okay, so we are not going to do the mechanism here. I'll just understand to make you, I'll just make you understand how to write down the product in this. Okay, few things you have to keep in mind. Suppose you have a ketone like this. So in acidic medium, acidic reaction of ketone, uh, later on in other chapters also we see, when we write down the reaction of it, we always draw the enol form of it. Okay. And the enol form of this molecule is this, no doubt. Okay. No doubt. Draw the enol form. And then when you do the oxidation of it, this reaction is exactly similar to the ozonolysis reaction. Okay, oxidation, ozonolysis reaction. You have to just break this double bond like we do in ozonolysis. So what we get here, we get OH here and double bond O plus we get O double bond C. We have two hydrogen here but the medium is acidic. So this also will get oxidized, OH and OH. And further it dissociates into CO2 and H2O. This is the product we get. Usually we get this. This one is forming over here since we have two OH present on the same bar. Just draw in all form, break that double bond like ozonolysis and attach oxygen. And you, you won't get aldehyde into this. Okay. You always get acid. This one you see. Could you write down the product in this one? Double bond O. In this one what happens? Uh, sir, could you explain how to get that diol? Which one? Uh, that is uh, alcohol on further oxidation now, sir. Like the yellow stem. This one, no? Yes, sir. You break this bond, OH is as it is. Here we yeah. get double bond O. Uh, yes, sir. This carbon will have double bond O this side, this one. And the two hydrogen here, that will also oxidize into acid OH like this. Okay, so one will get the normal carboxylic acid product and then another thing, the same carbon with two OH groups like that. OH. Means if the carbon atom contains H, you just need to convert into OH. Okay, sir. Like we Got did it, in sir. that one, oxidative ozonolysis it is. It is exactly similar to oxidative ozonolysis. Oh, okay, okay, sir. Means one line simple you keep in mind. You draw in all form, more stable in all form you draw and write down the product of oxidative ozonolysis. That is it. Uh, okay, yes, sir. So if you remember in oxidative ozonolysis, don't get al uh, sorry, aldehyde. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. So that's what the thing we have. Oh, okay. Okay. So in this one, what we do? We'll draw the more stable enol form and that would be this OH here and double bond here. Now after this, if you do oxidation, so we'll write down the oxidative ozonolysis. You just break this bond and that would be CH3 
C double bond O O H plus C H three. Done. Yes. Okay. The next one is selenium dioxide reagent. Okay, so in this one, how do we write down the product? You see, suppose we have CH3, C double bond OCS3. SeO2, if you hate this, then the product would be CS3, C double bond O, C double bond OH. That is it. I'll show you some more examples. pH, C double bond O, CS3. With the reagent, you will get pH. C double bond O, C double bond O, H. This is the product we get. Okay, if you have a six member ring with a double bond O present here, then the product here again a six member ring with two double bond O present at the adjacent position. Okay. This is what we do. Like, you know, when you have carbonyl compound, ketone, then with SeO2, selenium dioxide, you have to write down one more carbonyl group adjacent to the carbonyl group present. That is it. Number of carbon atom won't change. Here you see CS3CO. Instead of this CS3, we'll write down C double bond OH. Same thing we have here, same thing we have. Okay, so all these reactions you have to memorize how to write down the product. Finish? Yes, sir. Okay. Now in the next one, Suppose if you have alkene, write down in one note, alkene on oxidation with SeO2, alkene on oxidation with SeO2, the hydroxy group, OH group, the hydroxy group, OH group, gets attached to the allylic carbon. Okay, it gets attached to the allylic carbon. So what you need to do here, you just need to do this for alkene. Ketone, I have told you what you need to do. For alkene, suppose we have CH3CH, double bond CH2. This with SeO2, if you are reacting, then this carbon is the allylic carbon. So here what happens, we get OH. CH2OH, single bond CH, double bond CH2. That is it. This is the product you get. Okay, but in a given compound, we can have more than one allylic carbon possible, right? More than one allylic carbon is also possible. Okay, so you should know the rate of reaction for different different allylic carbon: one degree, two degree, and three degree. Okay, so write down the order of rate of reaction.
the order of rate of reaction for an allylic carbon the order of rate of reaction for an allylic carbon and this order is if you have 2 degree allylic carbon then it's the rate of reaction is maximum then 1 degree and then 3 degree okay 2 degree then 1 degree and then 3 degree means suppose if the allylic carbon is 1 degree and 3 degree then oh group get attached at the primary carbon one degree because the rate of the reaction is more if it is 2 degree and 1 degree then oh group get attached at the secondary carbon that is 2 degree right this reaction seo2 is important for exam point of view okay you just need to memorize two things over here okay one is for ketone will have an carbonyl group adjacent to the keto group which is already present and if you have alkene then at allylic position hydroxy group get attached at allylic position allylic position could be more than one in a given reaction for that we have order 2 degree is maximum then 1 degree and then 3 degree okay now based on this information this information You write down the product in these reactions with SeO two. With SeO two. With SeO. Okay. Okay. Then both carbon and allylic carbon are 2 degree so anywhere you attach this won't make any difference oh is the answer this one is 1 degree but this one is 2 degree 2 degree the rate is more so the product of this would be this oh this one the reaction place takes place at secondary carbon oh and this done yes sir yes sir next one is bayer villiger oxidation reaction bayer villiger oxidation 
this is used for mainly for ketone but it can oxidize obviously aldehyde also so it is used for the oxidation of aldehyde or ketone right so what happens in this suppose you have an ketone have a ketone r1cor2 and in this we take a peroxy acid for this purpose peroxy acid and this converts into this product so ketone is this and it converts into ester in this reaction we use peroxy acid for this purpose peroxy acid any peroxy acid we can use for this purpose got it so just what we need to do we need to insert an oxygen between the alkyl group and the carbonyl carbon but which alkyl group is the question correct so we'll discuss the mechanism for this first and then we'll talk about it okay did you write this yes sir okay now you see the mechanism ketone okay this is a peroxy acid peroxy acid and this peroxy acid this lone pair attacks onto the carbon atom and this pi electron moves onto the oxygen so what we get here R one C O minus R two O O C double bond O R H and positive charge. Right now, because of this, uh, you know, uh, H this is not stable. So from this, H plus comes out, and we get this. C double bond O R. We get this. Now here we have peroxy linkage. So this is not stable, right? And one of the oxygen takes the bond pair of electron and goes out, and it converts into R one C O minus. R two O positive charge plus O negative charge. Okay. Now after this, what happens? One of the alkyl group here.
one of the alkyl group, suppose this one, which has more migratory aptitude, this will migrate onto this oxygen. Means it takes this electron and migrate onto this oxygen. Okay, so this comes over here. Okay, this lone pair comes over here and this migrates onto this. So the product of this reaction is R1O C double bond O R2. This is the product we get. The one which, ha which has more migratory aptitude, okay, that, exactly that one get migrate onto the oxygen atom. So migratory aptitude of R1 is greater than R2, I am assuming. Okay. Hey, why is this migration take place? What? Why exactly does this migration take place? Your voice is not coming. Uh, no, sir. Very low, huh? Come, come again. No, sir. Better. So why exactly does this migration take place? Why migration happens? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll discuss this, wait. Okay, sir. See, uh, first of all, this lone pair comes over here, no? Right. And this positive charge on this oxygen, oxygen is electronegative element. So positive charge is not stable at all. So what it does, it attract the sigma electron towards its side. And if the attraction is great, then the sigma electrons breaks, the sigma bond breaks, and one of the alkyl group moves towards the oxygen atom. O positive charge. Right, so migration happens because of high electronegativity of oxygen one, plus there's a positive charge on oxygen. Right, and that's why it attracts the sigma electron, any one of these two sigma electron, and hence the migration takes place. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, so migratory aptitude you have to memorize. I'll just write down here, if you look at the migratory aptitude, because again, I, I, like I told you, mechanism is not important here. You just need to know migratory aptitude, nothing else. So migratory aptitude of hydrogen is maximum. Then we have three degree, two degree. Then we have phenyl, one degree, and then alkyl. This is the migratory aptitude, right? So the one which, which is a better migrator between that and carbonyl carbon, you attach one oxygen. That is the answer for that question. Nothing else. So suppose if I have this question, CS3 C double bond O, pH with CF3COOH. The answer for this one. C double bond OOH. Peroxy acid, no?
You're dumb. Size does not matter. It electron releasing power, Venkat. More electron yes, releasing group, more will be the migrating amplitude. Okay, yes, sir. In this two, which one is a better migrator? Two hairs. Two hairs. Sorry? Phenyl. Phenyl. Phenyl is a better migrator. So the one which is a better migrator, you just need to introduce oxygen there and that is it. Nothing, no mechanism and all. This one and this one, which one is a better migrator? Mm -hmm. Tertiary group. Yes, sir. So the product here is O C double bond O C S three. Okay. In this one, both are symmetrical, so we'll have this. Which one is a better migrator? Here it is two degree, and here it is one degree, right? So two degrees a better migrator, so four member ring convert into five member ring. And here we are double bond. Sir, I didn't get the last one. Why? Uh, I know. Last one's a kept problem. Last one with me, Deco. This carbon atom is what? This is two degree, right? And this is one degree. So two degree is a better migrator than one degree. Hence, this carbon and this carbon you have to introduce on oxygen. So four member ring convert into five member ring. Yes, sir. Got. Correct. Okay, next. Hello? Mm. 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 Oxidation of diol. Okay. So for oxidation of diol, we use HiO4, iodic acid. So suppose here also, how do we write down the product? CH2, CH2, OH. And when you allow this to react with HiO4, it is vicinal diol, HiO4. You just need to break this bond, the carbon-carbon bond, attach OH on both carbon. Okay. 
so the product is CH2OH OH plus we get OH CH2OH again on the same carbon atom 2OH is not stable so H2O comes out and we'll get HCHO H2O comes out and we'll get HCH Okay, so here also mechanism is not there. Just you need to break the carbon carbon bond carbon carbon bond which contains OH group. Those carbon carbon bond you have to break and attach OH on those carbon. Another example you see. Write down the product in this. What happens? We'll break this bond and attach OH. Again, this is not stable. The two H2O comes out and we'll be end up getting this molecule. What is the name of this compound? Hexane diol. Hexane diol. Diol. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. One comma six. Hexane diol. Okay. Write down the answer in this one. Right on the product, I'll just come and take water and come.
Okay, done? Yes, sir. What is the answer in the first one? All the carbon carbon bond you have to break. Attach OH. And you know the fact that on one carbon atom, two OH group is not stable. Right? Then eliminate water. You will get the final product. So okay. Three moles of methanol. And this is what this oxidation reaction we are doing, right? So alcohol, right? See, we know alcohol on oxidation gives aldehyde, which further oxidizes into acid, right? So here also, when you do the oxidation of diol, you will get either aldehyde or or a ketone here, right? So you see all these bond will break, this bond, this bond will break and each of these carbon atom contains one one OH group. So the, we'll get two molecules of this H2, COH, OH and the middle carbon which has one hydrogen but it contains three OH group. Yes or no? Yes sir. Right? Now after this, what happens from here? H2O eliminates and we get two molecules of H2C double bond O. That is formaldehyde. Right? And here also H2O goes out and we get formic acid. So this is the product of this reaction. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. In this one, what happens in the second one? So the first and second carbon bond breaks. See, this bond breaks and nothing else, nothing else can break. <laughs> this bond breaks and here, this bond and this bond won't break because at adjacent position, OH is not present. This side and this side of it. So this bond and this bond won't break. And we get... HCHO and uh, one keto all. And from this, C double bond O, CH2, CH2 OH. So can you hear me? CH2. Yes, okay. So now am I audible? Correct. Hello? So oxidation with HIO4 takes place only at the adjacent carbon. Right here it is not possible. No oxidation for this one. It will be as it is present over here. This present as it is. Try this one. Uh, hello? Can you hear me, sir?
on complete oxidation what we get here complete oxidation consider Uh, hmm. Oh, you can hear me? Now, yes. Hey, okay. Previous two times? No. Oh, okay. Like, I was telling products, like, could I, I don't think you could hear me that time. Uh, I didn't get you again. Okay, so now it's fine? Ah. Okay. No, it's not fine. Uh, I'm not speaking now, sir. <laughs> I mean, now I'm speaking, but when I told I was not speaking, before that I was not speaking. I, I got it. Let it be. I'll do this. Okay. okay sir. So, uh, you see, all these bonds break here. All these bonds. Correct. So, you look at this carbon atom. This one, we have 2OH. This one 2OH, this one 2OH, this one 2OH. So this four carbon atom gives you the similar product. Okay. So we get four molecules of H, C, and the carbon atom will have one OH already present on it. And two OH will get because of the dissociation of two bonds. Clear? Chalega? Yes. Uh, one second, sir. No, one second. No, sir, I'm process. One second, sir. Okay. See, the carbon atom, the number of bonds you are breaking, equal number of OH group you attach on the carbon atom. That is it. Now you think. We'll get four molecules of this, and we get one molecule of this one. and one molecule of this. This three. Tell me, is it right? Oh, okay, yes sir, yes sir. That's what I was thinking, what happened to the special things at the end. Correct? Now, yes sir. On this, on this what happens? H2O comes out? Formic acid. And, and you get four balls of this H, C double bond O, OH, one mole already present. So we get total how many? I shall write down four only because this reaction I have written. Plus HC OH already is there, this one. Plus this one gives you formaldehyde, which is this. Yes. Hence the answer for this question is, we get five molecules of formic acid and one molecule of formaldehyde. Done, sir. Okay. So with this, we have done with the various oxidation reaction. Okay. Next, we are starting with reduction reaction.
ओके द वेरियस रिड्यूसिंग एजेंट बी यूज फॉर दिस पर्पस आर the first one is a very strong reducing agent that is li alh4 the name is lithium lithium aluminum hydride lithium aluminum hydride this is lilh4 it is a coordination compound okay it is a coordination compound and it is represented as li plus al h4 minus okay coordination compounds are different from the simple compounds the part which is written in the square bracket this part we call it as coordination sphere and the part which is written outside the square bracket we call it as ionization sphere okay this is coordination sphere this is ionization sphere okay the coordination compounds differs with or the normal compounds in this way that when you dissolve this into any solvent then the part which is written in the square bracket this part the coordination is here this we also call it as a complex part of the molecule and hence it is a complex compound or coordination compound why complex part because it won't lose its identity in the solution lose its identity means what aluminum hydrogen bond does not break into the solution but if you take nacl right na plus cl minus both get hydrolyzed completely and in solution they loses their identity hence this kind of compounds are normal compounds the compounds which uh, you know when you dissolve in water does not lose its identity completely and does not break down into the smaller ions are called complex compound basic difference is this correct this part won't lose its identity in the solution when we start coordination compound we'll talk about it in detail correct so here we just you know the basic idea you must have so li alh4 is the coordination compound complex compound and its iupac name is lithium its iupac name is lithium tetrahydrido hydrido aluminate aluminate 3 this number is the oxidation state of the metal okay so to write down the iupac nomenclature of this compounds again we have certain rules for this those rules will discuss in that particular chapter like we have uh, iupac nomenclature of normal organic compounds for this also we have the same nomenclature correct now this is the reagent we have that is the reducing agent strong reducing agent now little bit we'll understand about the reduction reaction what is the reduction reaction reduction is the reaction in which 
there is an addition of hydrogen. Addition of hydrogen is reduction. Hydrogen is an electropositive element. Okay. So removal of electronegative element is of reduction. That is oxygen. Second way we can release this. Third way, acceptance of electron. Right. Acceptance of electron is again reduction. When you accept electron, oxidation state decreases. So decrease in oxidation state is reduction. All these four different ways we can understand a reduction reaction. Correct? Now what happens with aldehyde when we aldehyde and ketone in this reduction reaction? Did you copy this? Yes, sir. Copy. Yes. Okay. So heading you write down aldehyde ketone. Aldehyde ketone. We use R1 C double bond O R2. R1 C double bond O R2 with Li LH4. And H plus H2. Li LH4 and H plus H2O. The product we get here is R1, R2, you let it be as it is. With carbonyl carbon, you attach H and OH. Okay. So what is happening here? Ketone into two degree alcohol. Obviously reduction is so two degree alcohol gives ketone on oxidation. So ketone on reduction gives two degree alcohol. Correct. Mechanism you, want again, to know? Sir. mechanism you want to know? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, Okay. Okay. Yes. Understood. So, uh, See, first of all, what happens? First of all, this LiAlH4, like I said, it is a complex part, and it dissociates as Li plus and AlH4 minus ALH4 minus the structure that you see it is like this aluminium has four hydrogen attached with it and a negative charge present on aluminium okay so in the reaction what happens the Whatever you take, aldehyde or ketone, for example, for this one, you have taken this ketone. Right. From this, the ALH4, aluminum hydride that you have, this hydrogen takes this electron pair, means whatever the temperature we are using for this, that is enough to break this bond. The aluminum hydrogen bond is not that strong. Okay, it is ionic and it is not that strong bond. Okay, 
so we can dissociate this bond very easily and h minus comes out so h minus comes out that is the point here so basically this dissociates into alh3 which is a neutral molecule stable and hydride ion h minus comes out and this h minus attacks onto this carbonyl carbon okay and the reaction proceeds so kya ho gaya h minus comes out and this h minus attacks onto this carbonyl carbon pi electron shift onto this oxygen and we get here r1 co minus and for to neutralize this li plus dikh gaya yahan pe r2 is here and hydrogen is attached to it okay next what happens plus plus what we get plus we get alh3 next what happens with h plus h2o solvent li comes out and uh, and li forms so we get r1 coh r2 h plus we get lioh sir sir like uh, i'm not asking you to oppose anything but i generally like mechanisms and all but how exactly will it be a helpful and competitive exam how exactly like i like mechanisms and all but how exactly will it be helpful and competitive exams ha huh, i'll tell you okay Next sir month. okay sir okay now the like the question that you asked the answer for that is could you tell me if i write down this product from where this hydrogen is coming okay okay what tell me uh, because al li al h4 is a coordination compound and that gives al h3 and h minus which is very important so this h is coming from what coming from L li, li al h4 if they give you li al d4 here you will get d over here not hydrogen oh okay such things option mein hoga c d c h yahan pe c d bhi hoga c h bhi hoga hmm but the mechanism why it is important and why i am discussing this here because in question you will get sometimes yahan pe d plus d2 ho aur yahan pe li h4 al h4 Oh, okay, yes, sir. Li Al D four, or यहाँ पे H plus H two. Okay. Right. You see, first of all, so the important क्या है कि this hydrogen here, it is coming from from Li Al H four, or this hydrogen is coming from the solvent. This hydrogen is coming from the solvent. and this is coming from li alh4 so you know this fact already ki ketone 2 degree alcohol on oxidation gives ketone so obviously agar reduction hai like ketone is going under reduction so obviously the ketone converts into the secondary alcohol correct now to get secondary secondary alcohol r1 r2 you don't have to do anything you have to add here hydrogen and here hydrogen on carbon and oxygen but you need to take care of that this hydrogen is coming from which what is the source of this hydrogen and what is the source of hydrogen coming over here on this oxygen so yes sir li alh4 and solvent done yes sir done so what you need to keep in mind wherever you see this li alh4 right we need to see this h minus aa raha hai wahan se reaction simple 
here. LiAlH for the hydride ion it will give, and then reaction takes place. Nothing much you need to do. Okay. Fine. Now you look at this question. So once again, sir. I saw you moving your cursor, so I thought you'd be ready to ask us. Done, sir. Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Yeah, when you get just a second, I am on a call. Okay, I'm just right. 
Oh, okay. Sorry, 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 sir. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, Venkat. I got a call from one of the parents. So I have to pick you up. Tell me what happened. Did you finish it? Uh, yes, sir. I finished it. Okay. So this Li, Alh, Ford and H plus H2. So obviously we have formaldehyde. So we need to add H on the carbon and on the uh, oxygen. So the answer would be what? Answer would be CH3OH. Right, this one is an aldehyde. Obviously, it gives one degree alcohol, and that would be CS three CH two OH. This is ketone. It gives secondary alcohol CS three CH OH CS three. Because here we have everywhere we have hydrogen, so we don't have to think anything over here. But now here we have D plus D two and H plus. We know. the hydrogen that attach with the carbon atom that comes from the reducing agent lialh4 so here we have this hydrogen but here we have od instead of oh correct in this case what happens here we have oh here from the solvent and instead of hydrogen we have d is it clear yes sir this is what the product of this reaction okay this one you try Tell me the final product. 
B. So resident alkene. Alkene. In. E. Name. Square double bond CH. Wrong. Oh. Done. Yes, sir. What is the answer? Answer, tell me. Sir, I got an alkene, the same thing. Achha, okay. Here, the product we get is this. Okay. Now this is A with acid dehydration. Protonates H2O comes out and will get a carbocation. But then we have ring expansion possible. Right. With ring expansion, you'll get a five membered ring with positive charge present on this. And then H plus comes out from the adjacent carbon, and the answer here would be an alkene, cycloalkene.
Sir, you are muted. Yes, yes. I got your point, ma'am. Just give me some time. I'll arrange a call back uh, to you on this because, you know, I am not uh, related with ninth and tenth standard. I'm not taking classes into that. So obviously, like regarding the admission is concerned, I'll let you know. Uh, you know, you can take the admission. That's not an issue. Yeah, hello. Hello, sir. I don't know why I'm getting this call. Third call today from the parents. <laughs> Anyways, so what is the answer in this one? So first so step, you get a secondary <laughs> alcohol. See, Sorry, primary see, alcohol. See, I have discussed all these things. If you do not pay attention that if carbocation is forming, then there must be some rearrangement. If it is possible, you have to consider that. What you have done, you have just taken this H plus out and make a double bond over here. Yes? Yes, sir. Right. So take care of all these things. That's why when you revise GOC uh, on a regular basis, you will keep this thing in mind that what could happen. Okay. Anyways, so what happens in this one? Final product, tell me. Is there any ring? Uh, uh, is there any rearrangement carbocation? Uh, one second, sir. The hydride shift is. Uh, yeah, one comma two hydride shift from primary to secondary hydride. carbocation. So first of all, I think A I'll write down directly. We'll get it as this with carbon CH three, and here we get CH two OH. Correct? Yes, and yeah. then with Acid, yes, we'll get a carbocation here, which is this C CH3, and I'll write down positive charge here with CH3 after rearrangement. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. After this, is it possible? Like anything, anything possible here to get more stable carbocation? Now I'm very sure you forgot whatever I have discussed in GOC. No, sir. Now it can go further to the ring. What? It can go further to the ring. So what is the condition for ring expansion? Uh, you need to increase stability. Like we know that uh, three carbon what ring is and condition for ring expansion. The carbon atom attached to the ring. Sorry. The carbon atom might. Adjacent to the ring, adjacent to the ring, right? The positive yeah. charge present on the carbon atom just adjacent to the ring. So here we have the condition of ring expansion. If you remember, I have discussed when the positive charge present on the ring, this is the condition of ring contraction. Remember that? Yes, sir. Okay, so here what happens? The carbon atom here, it is the ring expansion. So one, two, three. Four, five. So we'll get a five-membered ring. 
after ring expansion. And at first carbon, we have two methyl group present. So this is a two methyl group. And we have a positive charge on the second carbon, which is this. Now you tell me after this what happens. Is this the most stable carbocation? Uh, no, sir. When you have a three degree carbocation, from a two degree, you can go to a three degree carbocation. How do we do that? Hydride shift. Where is the hydrogen? Methyl. Or methyl shift. Ha. Ah, so we have a methyl shift here further, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The further methyl shift gives you this. Uh, adjacent, adjacent, methyl, methyl. Yeah, that's what I meant. And then X plus comes on. Could you tell me how many structure we get over here? What is the most stable one? When the double bond is between those. Double bond in between? The methyl groups. Methyl groups. Uh, uh, left side double bond. Substituted alkene. This is the major product we get. Away. But a double bond, another product possible where we have double bond over here and here. Correct. Minor products. Yes, these are minor products. The most stable one is this, the major product. Right, you see, so like this, they frame the question. Okay, if you miss one thing, you will get minus one or zero. Simple. Yes, right. More substituted alkene, more stable, so we'll get that. Okay. So it is, you don't have to memorize this. You just need to know that when carbocation forms, we always form more stable carbocation by various uh, different methods, ring expansion, hydride shift, methyl shift, okay? So there is no uh, other rule for this. You have to aware of it, that this is happening, this kind of reaction is possible, and hence, this is the final product we get. Okay, no doubt in this. The point is, LiAlH4, the carbon atom takes hydrogen from LiAlH4 and oxygen takes hydrogen from, from what? From the solvent that is H2. Tell me the number of product possible in this reaction. number of product possible in this reaction. LiAlH4, H plus H2. Number of product, you tell me. Uh, one second, sir. Sir, two. I got two. How? 
isomer 7 you get the uh, alcohol there in the hydrogen hello yes hello yes sir okay ah then so uh, alcohol dash wedge for different configuration alcohol and hydrogen ah uh, that also yes so tell me how it is to uh, so once alcohol comes front uh, and the uh, alcohol and ch3 will be in the same plane next time hydrogen and ch3 will be in the same plane okay. how many parallel carbon here one only one yes sir Oh, one second, one second. How many carbon carbons? Two. Arena and Vidyuta. Ah. How many carbon carbons? Tell me. अरे बोलो तो what will happen you'll get a wrong response two 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 chiral carbons two chiral carbons then how many uh, what is the answer then two to the power two then it is four four then why did you say two that time process sir huh nothing 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 okay so the correct answer for this one is two Venkat. Sir. What? They go, like, try to understand. See. See, I have drawn this, uh, there must be some reason for this, correct? That will do some configuration difference. What configuration? Is me kya banega product? Amala, tell me how many products you get into this one. Same reaction. Hai. One. Do we have any difference in this two? Koi difference hai isme? Yeah. Yes. Uh... Ha, so how many products will get here? One, sir. OH. H and this methyl, correct? Niyati kaha Niyati, are you there? Yes, sir. How many chiral carbon in this? Two, sir. Two. This one and this one? Yes, sir. How many uh, structures, uh, the different products possible here? Sir, four. Four. Kaise hoga four, dekho? This one could be R. And this one could be R. So one possibility is both R R. Another possibility is both S S. Another possibility is one is R, other one is S. First one is S, next one is R. This is the four possibility here. Yes or no? Bolo yes. Yes, sir. Correct. All of you understood this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But when you have this diagram, it means it is the position of methyl is fixed. It's very logical and simple. When you draw this, it means this configuration is fixed now. R, S, whatever it is, but it is fixed. We cannot say this R, B, S, B, like we are doing over here. Because the methyl is fixed. It is coming out of the plane towards the observer. Right? So for this carbon, here also we have two chiral carbon. In this molecule, we have two chiral carbon. This kind of question I have discussed already before. But since it is the uh, you know wedge dash form over here, so methyl the configuration of this carbon is fixed because the methyl is fixed here. We cannot assume this that the, this methyl is going into the plane. So whether it is R or S, suppose I am assuming this as R. I am assuming this. I don't know whether it is R or S. I am assuming this. So this would be R only. But this can be what? 
This can be R or S, both. So the answer is what? Answer we can have R, R. Or we can have, this one can have S and this one is R only. We cannot change this. Boro, did you get it? Yes, sir. Right, so when we draw this structure, or if you draw this one also, as say, agar draw karoge, double bond O, or yaha pe break bana diya is tarah se, then also the answer will be 2 in this reaction. Because this is fixed. Here we, we cannot assume this to go out of the plane and into the plane, like here we are doing. So this is the difference in these two questions. Got it, Amla? Venkat, sir. Arin and Vidyuta. Yes, sir. Understood this? So this you must keep in mind. There is a difference of this structure and this structure. Here we cannot change the configuration of it. Jo bhi hai, we assume karing. Only one configuration, R or S. But iska configuration could be R or could be S. Both ho sakta hai. So these two possible combinations. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Next one, you see. Derivative of acid. Acid and its derivative. We are looking at LiAlH4. The reaction of LiAlH4 we are, we are looking at. So there is no difference between the first and the third one. No, Vidyata. There is no difference as far as the number of product is concerned. The only difference is the view angle is different. The first one you are looking from the top. And the first one, if you look at from the bottom, you will get the third molecule. Did you get it, Vidyoda? Yes. So as far as the product is concerned, the number of product, there is no difference in the two. The view angle is different for the two. Okay. Next, you write down derivative of acid. Where is Advaita? Any, inf any information? No. No, sir. Sir, uh, she told she texted you why she isn't here. Oh, I did not see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You see this compound RC double bond O L living group. Okay. L is the living group. L I L H 4. So I'm not going to write down this again and again, how H minus we get from this. Okay. Can I write this directly from this will get hydride ion H minus? No issue. Right? Yes, sir. This will attack onto this carbon. This five electrons shift onto this oxygen. What do we get? We get RCO minus H here. And this H comes from? LiAlH4. So the product is what? RCOH and aldehyde. And aldehyde, we know if you use excess of LiAlH4, this further reduce into what? LiAlH4. This further reduce into alcohol. Clear? No doubt. So what we are getting? R C double bond O L. L is the leaving group here. Could be C L B R I O C S three O P H O C O C S three anything. Right? R C H two O H we are getting. Write down the product in these reactions quickly. C H three C double bond O C L. LiAlH4 H plus H2 CS3 CH2 C double bond O O CS3 Same thing RCOOH Same thing. 
product. Ben? Uh, yes, sir. So, first one, can I write down the product directly? The yes, product sir. will be the CH2OH. First, we'll get aldehyde with same carbon atom and then aldehyde reduced into one degree alcohol. This is what we'll get CS3. CH2. Oh, just a second. Hydrogen atom. So we'll get CH2OH. Plus, we'll get CH3OH from the leaving group. This also we get. Okay, this converts into R C double bond O H, which further reduce into R C H two O H. Remember, this is possible when L I A L H four is in excess, right? Then only it happens. This one is a bit different, uh, you know, reaction. I'll show you how. Acid. It is exactly same mechanism we have, but one thing you will get, maybe you'll get confused. And that's why I'm discussing this. RCOH with LiAlH4, LiAlH4, which gives H minus ion. So H minus ion attacks onto the carbon and it forms O minus H and OH. Further, what happens? This lone pair comes over here, and this OH minus goes out as a leaving group. RC double bond O H plus OH minus. Now you see, till now we have discussed that OH minus is not a good leaving group, correct? Yeah. Alcohol always goes under protonation. This converts into H2O plus and then H2O goes out. This is what we were discussing till now. Mm, yes, sir. But here it is happening. And that's why I'm discussing this mechanism. Agar, if you don't see this, then the mechanism is same. Like we're getting the product similarly, like we're getting in the other reaction. But if you look at the mechanism, you may get confused that how this OH minus is leaving out. Correct? So why it is happening here? OH minus is a poor leaving group. But why it is happening? Because we don't have any other choice actually. Either you see, either OH, OH minus will go out or H minus will go out. That is what possibly. And if you compare this to, then OH minus is more stable than H minus because the negative charge present here on oxygen and electronegative element. So if you have to compare OH minus and H minus, OH minus is better than H minus in terms of the living nature. And that is why it is happening here. Otherwise, it is a poor leaving group. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, that is what it happens. So after this, again, what happens? This goes under reduction with LiAlH4 and converts into alcohol. That is RCH2OH. Okay, similarly, we can talk about esters also. See this.
with li als code could you tell me the product here this is a living group ococs3 tell me the product RCH2OH and CH3CO. So we get here R C double bond O H first of all from this part, and the leaving group forms CH3 C double bond O O H acid. Acid further reduced into aldehyde CH3 C double bond O H. This mechanism, if you see. And this further converts into what? An alcohol that is CS3, CS2, OH. Any doubt in this? This also gets reduced into R, CS2, OH. No doubt? No, sir, no doubt. Okay, so this is the reaction of LiAlH4. Okay, you see this. Uh, some more example here. Uh, suppose I'll take one example like this. LiAlH4. Major product. Tell me, done? Yes. Sir. What is the answer? Cyclohexylmethanol. Cyclohexyl. Cyclohexylmethanol. Why cyclohexide? So the positive charge in there. Not sure.
final answer or this intermediate answer? Final answer is this. Final answer is me. Correct. No. I can't hear you, Venkat. See, here what we get, Amna, will you get alcohol here? Yes or no? Yes, sir. That alcohol is this CH2, CH2, OH. Okay. And this is again an acidic hydrogen with tarangiac yes. you meet here. That is it. Clear, no? Yes. Fine. Venkat, you are not audible. Your voice is not coming. Okay. So anyways, we'll take a break now. Yeah, we'll take a break now. We'll resume the session at 6.50. Okay, guys? Yes, sir. Take a break.
Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So next uh, reaction write down of LiAlH4. Reaction of amide RCO NH2 with LiAlH4 and H plus H2O. Okay, the product here we get is RCNH2 and 2 hydrogen here. Means From amide to amine, that is primary amine, one degree. Okay, I would suggest you to memorize the reaction like this only. RCONH2 converts into RCH2NH2. Okay, mechanism we'll discuss, you copy down this. So in the first step, RCO NH2 from LiLH4, it forms hydride ion, right? This comes from LiLH4 and this attacks onto the carbon atom, this goes up. And the product is RCO minus H and NH2. Okay. To neutralize this, we write here Li plus. Okay. Further, the lone pair on nitrogen forms a pi bond. And this goes out here as a living group. And the, here we get RCH double bond NH H here. Okay, this molecule further we have a positive charge onto this nitrogen because it comes back here. To neutralize the positive charge, this H plus comes out and this is taken up by this LiO minus, or we can say O Li minus takes this hydrogen from here and it forms. RCH double bond NH plus LiOH. This molecule is imine. Okay, now in this again LiAlH4 gives hydride ion. And this again attacks onto the carbon atom and it forms RCH2 and this electron pair shift over here forms NH negative charge on it with in the last step with H plus H2O converts into R. CH2 NH2 RCH2 NH2 This is the mechanism, right? Uh, so once again, I This hydrogen, these two hydrogen comes from LiAlH4. Only this you have to memorize. And this hydrogen
comes from solvent. That is water here. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, so the initially from NH plus H, the O minus Li abstracts that hydrogen and goes away as LiOH. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, so then it becomes RCH and H not plus. The plus also is removed. Where? The white steps are middle row. H plus goes with this. No, so electron pair is taken up by this nitrogen. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Just one second, sir. Now is my voice audible? Ah, it's okay. Right. So I would suggest mechanism you don't focus much. Just you see, amide is converting into amines and carbon atom, the both hydrogen. Is coming from LiAH4. Uh, once again, sir. Done? Yes, sir. Okay. One more point here that you need to take care of. That the derivative of amide, if it is there, if this nitrogen atom does not contain any hydrogen, then the reaction is not possible. Suppose here we have two alkyl group attached. Then this cannot take the alkyl group from this nitrogen, correct? So after this, the reaction is not possible. So for this reaction, obviously we have amide. We can have derivative of amide, but again, the nitrogen must have at least one hydrogen on it. So for this reaction, at least one hydrogen okay the functional group which contains nitrogen all reacts with LiAlH4 and converts into amines this is the general thing you have you can uh, keep that in mind any functional group you can take amide you can take cyanide you can take imine you can take nitro all these converts into amine one degree of mine. So what's could you repeat those again? A functional group that contains nitrogen atom. Okay, once again, sir, once again. Functional group. The functional group which contains nitrogen atom. So uh, as in which one? R C O in this case. No, any functional like amide ho gaya, nitrogen atom is there. R C O okay. RCN ho gaya, right? RCH double bond NH imine functional group, RNO2, these are. Right? So functional group, I'll, I'll give you the example right on the first this. The functional group which contains nitrogen.
on reaction with LiAlH4, on reaction with LiAlH4, gives primary amine. primary amines okay for example you see this converts into r ch2 nh2 r ch2 nh2 here again both hydrogen here is coming from solvent from solvent and this hydrogen is coming from LiLH4. Okay, cyanide converts into primary amine. If you have imine, this reaction just we have seen before with the same reagent NH, it converts into RCH2 NH2. If you take RNO2, it converts into RNH2. If you take oxime, again it gives one degree amine. So these are the reactions we have. For example, tell me the product in this one, LiAlH4H2O. Sir, uh, hexagon CH2 and H2. These two reactions, tell me the product. And sir, the, uh, the source of the hydrogen is gonna remain the same in all the cases, same. right? Okay, sir. Just a minute, sir. Okay, so all these reactions are given in uh, amines chapter, okay? Last of the organic chemistry. But reduction reaction, we are doing it here only. So we are not going to do any oxidation reduction reaction after this. We are covering all the chapters. Sir. Okay, sir.
done here what happens rcn converts into what rch2 ns2 correct so it is a six yes. member ring converts into ch2 ns2 here also you see i said nitrogen must have at least one hydrogen so this converts into ch3 ch2 n this would be as it is and one hydrogen remember this hydrogen is coming from solvent here it is not like the nitrogen retains this hydrogen over here no it is coming from the solvent if you take d2o here d plus d2o you will get n with d this hydrogen on carbon it is coming from li ans4 okay yes sir next reaction you see epoxide this reaction is exactly same like we did in case of grignard reagent the only difference is here we have h minus not r minus and that h minus comes from what comes from li alh4 yes that is a reducing agent li alh4 li alh4 gives h minus and this h minus like alkyl group there it attacks onto this carbon atom this comes up here and this gives you hydrogen then ch2 ch2 o minus anti position right o minus and then with h plus h2o it converts into what it converts into h ch2 ch2 o h remember one thing that this is this one and this one present at anti position present at anti position this comes from this comes from comes from li lh4 this hydrogen just a second this hydrogen comes from solvent here clear exactly same reaction we have same pattern of reaction we have with rngx if you see only r will be replaced the only difference is what there we have r minus that comes from rmgx rmgx reagent you are changing right so obviously the attacking particle will also be different but the same pattern we have over here there's no any doubt sn2 type attack if you have unsymmetrical epoxide then this h minus will attack onto the on to the less hindered side for example could you tell me what is the product we get in this reaction ch3 ch ch2 oxygen same reagent tell me the product is it primary alcohol yes it is propane to all yes sir product is
what is the source of this hydrogen water this hydrogen that one l i l h 4 and this o h is water always okay if you have uh, this uh, one this one pli alh4 with nh4cl nh4cl also gives you the same product okay nh4cl also gives you the same product the product of this reaction is right this h minus comes from the top onto this comes from the top this comes over here this won't attack onto this carbon because it is crowded correct so this ch3 ch3 will be up here because when this goes when this bond pair comes over here oxygen will be down so oh is here and hydrogen from the lilh4 will be here and this hydrogen here as it is okay now we are we were we were using h plus h2o here correct here it is nh4cl but then also the product won't change here so what does this do this h nh4cl okay you Provides see provides water hydrogen nh4cl is a salt of what again weak base and and strong acid strong acid so it's it's a uh, it goes on hydrolysis and it gives what it gives acidic solution correct because acidic is strong acidic solution means in the solution we have h plus and hence the medium is acidic hence if you write h plus h2o or nh4cl it gives you the same product correct understood yes sir okay so this is it for uh, li alh4 oh, sorry reaction of aldehyde ketone we have discussed we have discussed epoxide cyanide amide we have discussed we have discussed imine hydrox uh, this one oxime many a uh, compounds we have discussed on so the next one we have to discuss with lilh4 that is the reduction of alkene and alkyne with lilh4 okay lilh4 with alkene and alkyne suppose we have a reaction rch double bond ch single bond ch3 see this reaction with lilh4 it does not give any reaction no reaction here why no reaction because this to this gives what this gives hydride ion both sides directly hindered and this here also we have five electron cloud right so this electron cloud repel this hydride ion if it is an electrophile it may attack onto the carbon atom which is not the case here yes that's why the reaction is not possible here with alkene and alkyne but 
in this case, you see this one. H plus S two. In this case, when you take here AlCl three, then the reaction possible that is RCS two CS three, you will get the product. Okay. No, no, no. That's right, Winker. That's not possible. So that's right and not possible. No, SN two with aryl vinyl is not possible. Why are you discussing this now? No, sir. Just told us a same thing. No, sir. Same principle. Aryl and vinyl uh, compound halide does not go under SN two reaction. Yes, sir. That's what I meant. It's also say. very difficult over there. For aryl, for aryl. SN one, SN two, both very difficult because na neither the carbocation forms stable, nor the bond dissociation is possible over there for SN two. Okay, so, sir. Hello. Yes. Oh, okay, sir. Understood. Thank you. Hmm. Like it is similar principle, no, sir. Hence I told it. Nothing else, sir. Okay. Fine. So this is the reaction possible with AlCl three. AlCl3 is what AlCl3 is a Lewis acid. Is the Lewis acid. So any Lewis acid may give this kind of product. Okay. So look at the mechanism here. This pi electron it takes here in this vacant orbital of aluminium, and it forms R C H C H delta positive, delta negative. Okay. Now, after this, what happens? Since this charge develops here, so this H minus this attacks onto the carbon atom here. Okay, R C H H C H two A L C L three. This happens. This bond breaks and comes over here. Okay. Now next, what happens from this? Here we have the positive charge on carbon atom. Just a second. Okay, so next, what happens? This bond pair is taken up by this carbon R C H H C H two negative charge on this, and C L A L C L three goes out. Why this happens? Because The electronegativity of carbon is more than the electronegativity of aluminium, so it takes the electron pair negative charge on it. Now in the next step, with H plus H two O, it gets protonates, and it forms This hydrogen, this hydrogen. This comes from 
this comes from solvent this comes from li alh4 uh so one second sir i didn't quite understand this then i uh, know sir could you one second sir i'm getting confused here why one second sir i don't know uh, just a minute sir like i'll go through this so sir the aluminum will form a com complex because it's in lewis acid it'll accept it mm -hmm. right and then uh, h minus is generated as usual because of lilh4 yeah okay and then del minus and del plus develops on aluminum and carbon respectively the after that i don't understand nothing then h see here why the reaction was not taking place because of pi electron now yes, this pi electron is involved with aluminum okay so carbon gets some positive charge here and there this h minus can attack on this okay and after this to so simple if ye epoxide ki tarah ye ring open hoga and then it goes up oh okay okay so i got it so basically you just have to break the double bond and attach hydrogen on the both carbon atoms yes sir but which hydrogen came from where that's also important right ha huh. done finish done sir okay now the next one is similar reaction we have with alkyne rc triple bond c cs3 same thing happens twice actually so it goes with first it forms an alkene and then further the reaction takes place and it converts into an alkene so eventually you will get alkene only in this one. so same mechanism no sir Same, same mechanism, no sir. Peroxide. LiLH four H plus. it gives two molecules of oh okay heterolysis happens here one of the hydrogen takes uh, oxygen takes h plus and similarly hydrogen attach over here you get two molecules of alcohol right double bond if it is present in conjugation this
this is the product we get double bond get reduced when it is in conjugation like this here aldehyde will reduce into alcohol fine but this double bond will get reduced when it is in conjugation if it is not in conjugation for example ch3 ch double bond ch cho double bond will be as it is this double bond won't get reduced here since it is not in conjugation so these are some specific reactions that you have to memorize then yes sir sandasina to the another reducing agent we have lilh4 we have done the another one is nabh4 this sodium sodium borohydride sbh we also write it as this is also a complex compound complex compound like li alh4 the name of this is iupac name sodium tetrahydrido tetrahydrido borate iupac name of this okay the structure of this if you see like i said it is similar to that of li alh4 okay now boron attached with four hydrogen and one negative charge on it okay now this boron hydrogen bond is less ionic lesser ionic than lesser ionic than aluminum hydrogen bond in al at 4 minus okay so this one is this one is lesser ionic right and it is what lesser ionic means it has more covalent character more covalent character correct now more covalent character means what the bond is stronger we have stronger bond over here stronger bond means you it is difficult to dissociate this bond and produce h minus ion okay h minus ion is difficult to produce right hence hence this bond is what this nabh4 is a weaker reducing agent weaker than li alh4 got it
okay weaker reducing agent than lilh4 since the bond is strong here okay one more point here this nabh4 can't reduce can't reduce ester can't reduce ester this is important okay nabh4 can't reduce ester because it is lesser uh, you know a uh, weaker reducing agent than lilh4 now based on this two lilh4 and nabh4 sometimes they ask you to compare the rate of reaction so compare compare the rate of this reaction with respect to with respect to lilh4 and with respect to nabh4 compare the rate done no no that's not correct tanker see first of all how do we compare the rate of this okay by so comparing leaving groups no oh stability of the uh, we compare the positive charge density on the carbon atom this one then only h minus will attack on this na the first step is what the first step is the attack of hydride ion from these Uh, reagents correct so if this positive charge density is more then more will be the tendency to attack on this now we compare the positive charge density here this is what minus i or what it shows minus i this shows plus yes sir there's no effect here and this shows plus i or plus h both we can see okay now because of plus m the positive density here decreases and goes to the minimum value that's why the rate of b would be minimum for sure minus i this electric
positive charge density increases and hence the rate of A would be maximum here. Between C and D if you compare, here we have plus H and there is no effect here. So C is more and then we have D. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, now NaBH4, NaBH4 can't reduce ester. So, only so that is have, last. Only we have no. Only we have to eliminate D. This is not possible for B. So it would be D, then C, and then A. Not valid for B. So, sir, positive charge on carbon atom facilitates faster reaction, increases rate of reaction because hydride ion can attack easily. Easily, yes. Okay, sir. Yeah. So, NaBH4 can reduce only... NaBH4 can reduce aldehyde With the reagent NaBH4 H plus H2O, it converts into one degree alcohol. Ketone gives you two degree alcohol. If you have acyl chloride, It first converts into aldehyde. Then it converts into alcohol. Okay, so this is for NaBH4, correct? Next, we have to start with catalytic hydrogenation. We want to start it today. So one second. Uh, I was writing that actually. This is again. This sure, sure. write down catalytic hydrogenation. Okay. So we'll start from this next class. First you copy down this. Done, sir. Done? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Now, one uh, reaction we'll see. It is not oxidation reduction reaction. Just one small concept I would like to you know, discuss here. Okay. That is... Uh, uh, the concept of neighboring group participation. Okay. So this one you see, 
this we call it as a type of nucleophilic substitution reaction okay in short we write it as snnjp okay nucleophilic substitution reaction where the neighboring group participates into this okay we also call it as this thing we also call it as anchimeric assistance anchimeric assistance what is this reaction you see suppose we have a compound um H Cl H sulfur and phenyl here pH sulfur is lone pair on this okay now in this what happens suppose we have a nucleophile oh minus here for neighboring group participation the group here and here you see this is a leaving group leaving group is this so the attacking particle present in the same molecule and the leaving group is present on the at the anti position of this attacking part okay so what happens here you see this group that is attached over here it must have lone pair present on it right lone pair present on it so this lone pair it is like intramolecular it attacks onto this carbon and this leaving group goes out do you see the neighboring group takes part in the reaction that's why it is neighboring group participation so we'll get a this reaction you see sulfur here bonded with this ph positive charge onto the sulfur atom and hydrogen will be here and here also will have the hydrogen correct just a second yes always anti this should always present at the anti position of this leaving group okay and the two hydrogen will be here rearrange itself like this okay this attack this attack is first of all it is sn2 type okay so there will be a change in configuration here first so whatever the configuration we have here here we have the opposite configuration means r becomes s over here in the next step what happens the nucleophile of the reaction oh minus oh minus attacks here on the same carbon atom and it push this electron pair onto this sulfur atom it goes back onto its original position right so what happens the same type of attack happens here and oh from the bottom h on the top then here again h on the bottom sph on the top sulfur and phenyl on the top even this attack is also sn2 type so again this configuration changes over here so whatever the configuration we have here here we retain the configuration finally retains configuration so this is sn2 type attack two step sn2 type neighboring group participation sn ngp we have right so the you know the property of this reaction is what mechanism is through sn2 but we have two steps of sn2 so configuration we retain the configuration of the molecule r is r only in between it becomes s but then again it converts into r okay when it takes place we have sph present like this lone pair must be here 
and leaving group present on the opposite side. Okay. The second property of this reaction is what? This reaction is extremely fast reaction. Okay. The rate of reaction of this ROR of SN NGP is thousand times faster. Okay. Thousand times faster than faster than SN1 or SN2 reaction. It happens so fast. Right. Now the group that shows SN uh, NGP reaction are I have given you this sulfur. If it is sulfur present, then it, it is possible. If uh, you know the group that shows sulfur hoga so SNGP possible. Agar iodine is there, SNGP possible. Bromine is there, SNGP possible. Lone pair, we need lone pair. Even for phenyl also it is possible because it's a pi electron react kar sakta hai, pH. Pi electron may take part in that. Okay, so this is SNNGP. Bahut jada important it is not. Okay, not much important, but yes. Uh, rate like, you know, on the basis of rate, they can ask you some question plus configuration basis question they may ask. Uh, one second, sir. Yes, I written this down. Okay. Now on yes, this, sir. what kind of questions uh, forms? Means take or the question you must see. Suppose we have a phenyl ring present here, and we have CH two. CH two. Suppose this is carbon fourteen. We have just to differentiate the two carbon atoms. C fourteen here, and here we have Cl. Okay, this is the benzene ring. Okay, OH minus is the nucleophile here. So you see, this is here and this is present here. So here, what happens? We have anchimeric uh, assistance. Okay, that is S N N G P. This pi electrons shift onto this carbon atom, and then this attacks onto this C fourteen, so that this leaving group goes out. Right. This is S N N G P. S N two, the first step of the reaction. I'll write down the Overall mechanism is SNNGP, but the first step it is SN2 configuration changes. Okay, so what happens here? It forms like this. This CS2 will be here, and this C14 H2 is here, and this bond will be like this. Positive charge. Okay, next what happens? The attack of OH minus again SN2. Okay, so this attack, this will attack onto this carbon atom and this goes up, forms a double bond here. So this will be a benzene ring. Everything is as it is. Write down the product, this car ring attached with this carbon atom and this 14 H2 with OH here. This is a product we get. Sir, could you please explain the yellow step again, sir? See, it attacks onto this. We get a three member ring. In this one. Okay. Three member ring. Which is, and this may attack onto this. This goes up and will get the structure. Oh, okay. But here, the possibility of OH minus is equal to attack onto this carbon also. Because both are equivalent. 
Yes, sir. So other product for this is this one. CH2. If this attacks over here, just a second. Ah, okay. So this attacks onto this carbon. If see, I'll change the color here. If this attacks, if OH minus. attacks on this carbon then what happens this bond goes over here then what happens you see this carbon will be 2 and it is 14 right this attached with the ring and will get ch2 oh understood this oh yeah yes sir so can you repeat it just a second ha ah, tell me what i said this oh minus has equal probability to attack on this carbon and this carbon yes fine yes, yes. okay so when this attacks onto this the white line you see this attacks over here this bonds goes over here and the ring attached with this carbon with c14 carbon and oh this is the product clear yes sir now but when this will attack onto this carbon atom this bond goes over here now the ring attached with c14 and this carbon will have oh yes hmm yes that is what i have written now they may ask you the relation between the product and the relation is what they are positional isomers positional isomers positional isomers of each other so this kind of question they may ask then ah uh, yeah yes sir done one more question you see the last one for this suppose you have a compound like this this is d this is h the a nucleophile in the molecule and leaving group must must present on the opposite side right yeah in, sir in anti positions yeah in this one the reaction is possible or not and here we have chlorine with oh minus the reaction possible in this in this also the reaction possible because it is a single bond no carbon carbon single bond so this will rotate itself in opposite direction at the anti position and then the same thing will have over here right so if you have an open bond like this a acyclic structure then whether it is at the same position means syn position or anti position the reaction is possible and the product in this one would be sch3 CS three H configuration though won't change because it retains the configuration and OH here. So this why because the rotation across this bond is possible, right? And then it will go at the anti position. But when you have ring uh, structure, this is not anti position. That's what I said. It is not anti, but they can rotate itself across carbon carbon single bond. and then we'll go to the anti position and then reaction possible but this kind of rotation is hindered in this structure when you have when you have cyclic structure like this or in this one when you have cyclic structure like this then the rotation is hindered so in this case it must be at the anti position 
But when you have acyclic compound, this one, the last one, acyclic compound, then whether it is present over here or here, it gives us the reaction because the rotation carbon-carbon bond possible. No, the bulkiness won't be there, but reaction is possible. It can rotate itself. We can have conformational isomers of this. No, sir, in the previous case. What? Hindrance in the previous case is because of bulkiness, no, sir? Where we have hindrance? Here? You, rotation, cyclic structure rotation is not possible. No, no, no. This is the uh, nucleophile, no? Molecule. Uh, this, yeah. These are antiposition. Phenyl and chlorine must be an If it is not also, it's fine because it is carbon-carbon single bond. Oh, right. Okay, sir. Understood? Yes, sir. So this is SNNGP, nucleophilic substitution neighboring group participation. Okay, so this is it. So next class, we'll start with uh, uh, what? Catalytic hydrogenation. Okay, and next class, we'll finish this. On Learnies, the assignment has been uploaded. You can uh, solve those questions. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye.